Thunder Report from 1077, the franchise. Greetings, Thunder fans. We're getting closer to game four of the Western Conference semifinal series between the Oklahoma City Thunder and the LA Clippers with Oklahoma City up two games to one. The Clippers are still trying to figure out what to do with the Thunder beyond Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. It's the bench and sideline players that are having a great series so far. Meanwhile, Oklahoma City just wants to get better. In this report, we talk to the players, both for the Thunder and the Clippers, after their Saturday morning practices. How are you able, when you have that many fouls late in the game, to still stay aggressive and attached to Blake? It's tough. It's tough, you know, but my coaches, my teammates, they did a great job to me, to talk to me. You know, they were talking to me every time. Don't worry about the fouls, stay aggressive, and focus, keep playing your game. You know, we got, we got 12 players on the bench, so, you know, no matter what, we got some players can come in the game and try to stick to right, to do the same job. Do you feel like you're losing yourself in the game? You get these moments of all comes to you and you waste no time and just get done what you need to get done? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, when, especially when you got two uh, quick early foul and they take you out. You know, it's tough. You're on the bench all the time, watching your teammates play. You know, it's tough, you know. But like I said, uh, just stay focused and try, try to do what you can do and the rest, you know, just let go. Is it frustrating for you? Blake has a perception of uh, maybe crying about fouls and just kind of some shenanigans, if you will. Is it tough for you to play against him in that regard? Well, first of all, you know, uh, when I play against him, I don't really worry what he do or whatever. You know, I'm just trying to do what I can what I can do. I just try to play my game and stay my, on my own, focus, you know. Sometimes I'm gonna get for trouble. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you never know. All I can do, all I can control is what I can do, you know. Uh -huh. As a team, what's been the key for you guys defensively over the past couple of games that maybe wasn't there in game one? Seems like you're cutting down their three-point opportunities and some other things. Yeah, after we lost the first game, um, uh, we come back to practice, we watch some film session, we learn how to play against them. I think that's what's the key. All uh, right, we won. I mean, we got to get that out of our head and just uh, realize it's a must-win game for us. And uh, knowing that it's going to be a tough environment, but you know, guys are you know ready to lock in right now and focus on the next game. And knowing it's going to be tough, um, we got our heads wrapped around it. So you know, we're going to watch some film today, see how we can get better. Is it tough to forget about the previous game and get on the next? No, not at all. Because I mean, it's it's easy to forget about it when you lose. So you got to be easy when you win too. So it's not how we respond to losses. You know, which I think that's the that's the easy part for teams, but how you respond to wins and how you uh, how you stay level headed and. You know, go out there and, uh, and play extremely hard and, and better the next game. Is, is this as, as well as you can remember a Thunder team playing this little stretch here of like four or five games? Oh no, oh no, I'm not, <laughs> not going to talk about that. I'm just, I, I, you know, there's a lot of things we can get better at. Our defense, you know, it has to be uh, better. We haven't played our best defensive game yet, um, so we want to we want to put that out on the floor. But you know, we're not we're not concerned about you know. How great we've been playing. We always concerned about, you know, how, how better we can, how much better we can get uh, in, in a short period of time. So, you know, we always looking at, you know, places that we can grow as a team. Kevin, they started out. They had like an eight-point lead early in the game. What was the key to you guys staying close and not letting it get away? Going on the road, you got to weather storms. It's everybody against. It's a whole arena against you, and uh, we knew that would happen. And we're a veteran team. We've been through it before, so we just had to stick together and uh, stay poised, and I think that's what everybody did. Yeah, you guys getting better. It seems like you're, getting, you're still improving this late in the season. People like Stevens playing much better. Uh, a lot of different areas, this team seems to still be improving. Yeah, we are. that's the, that's the beauty of our team is that everybody's growing um, by the day. Young guys that haven't been here before are learning on the curve. And uh, everybody's just, uh, we're just sticking together through it all. No matter what happens, we're going we're gonna to stay uh, as a core, as a group, you know, uh, together. So, you know, no matter what the game throws at us, we, we just got to, uh, you know, persevere through adversity and, and, and remain together. Kevin, what do you like about the way Serge is playing on Kevin? Oh, uh, he's, he's playing aggressive. Uh, he didn't let foul trouble um, take him out of the game. And I think he did a great job of just playing extremely hard. And uh, when the shots came his way, he knocked him down. You know, they made some big shots for us. Karan came in and hit some huge shots. Reggie was good at getting to the rim. And uh, once we play freely and with the pass and with body movement, uh, we can shift the defense and that allows our scores to score. So we got to continue to do that. How did it feel to wake up a winner this morning? Good. Uh, you know, happy that we won, but it's the first team to four. Uh, we got two. Now we're in two more games. There was talk with Kevin about uh, wondering if this is as well as 
a Thunder team has played since you've been here through this stretch of winning four or five? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I really don't know the answer to that, but I mean, we, we're in a good place. I think we just stick together and continue playing defensively like we're playing. We put ourselves in a position to win. Uh, just, you know, going off defensive reads. I mean, if they help, my job is to be able to find guys who's open, uh, or get them balls, and then uh, if not, just stay in the track mode. Is this the well you've ever seen before us in terms of understanding the defense and having guys in spots that need to I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, our guys are doing a great job of spacing uh, and being ready to shoot it and giving me an open floor to be able to see you know, the reads. Just be aggressive, man. Just play his game. Uh, not think too much. Just go out and, and be aggressive. And when he does that, I mean, it's hard to stop. What's your relationship like with Darren Collison? Good relationship. Real good. I, mean, I talk to him throughout the year, throughout the seasons from time to time. Uh, you know, we've been knowing each other for a while, so definitely good relationship. He, he said that you're basically the same guy that you were with UCLA. Yeah. The same fiery competitor. Or yeah, like yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we definitely throughout practice compete all the time, play one on one after practice. And, you know, we definitely are, you know, cool guys off the floor as well. What's your perception? Go ahead, Brian. She's not bond. You know, he struggles early, but then those shots start to fall. And the guys around him get a sense of reward, okay? He keeps spreading the floor, keep giving him those good looks, good things are going to happen. Yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's done it for a while, man. He's not. You know, if he continues to get open looks, he's going to make some of them. And uh, he puts in the work. Uh, he's done it for some years now. We just got to continue to have confidence in him. Uh, not sure. Um, I'm definitely able to get into a rhythm coming in, get into a routine. I would say just coming in, getting the workout, uh, going to games, just knowing that I'm able to stay on the floor longer like that. Russell, the perception was early in your career that you maybe pressed when you were back in Los Angeles. I don't know if that's fair or not, but it looks like you've certainly <laughs> settled in now. Is that uh, true or not? Is it any different? Nah, it's not true. Kevin, <laughs> Scott keeps using when he talks about you and Kevin more the balance. Do you feel like you're balancing your hand you don't want to go for yourself you want to get your teammates involved? Maybe trying. It's ever been. Trying to. I mean, it can be tough at times, but... All you can do is try to, to the best of your abilities and try to find a way to win games. Do you feel like you're finding that balance as best as you ever have? Uh, not sure, but I know as long as we continue to win, I'm happy with that. How have you guys guard against being content with one win here in Los Angeles and stay with that same intensity in game four? Easy. I mean, we didn't win a series. We just won a game. Uh, to, to win a series, then you got to win four games. Um, last night, I like about Serge. He didn't have the best first half. But he came out in the third quarter, and he had a, a great third quarter, in my opinion, offensive and defense. Uh, Blake hit some tough shots, but, you know, we'll live with some of those. But I thought his effort was there. His mindset has been great, uh, and we just need him to keep going. Kirk, you said about making sure you guys are satisfied with winning last night. And the big win to get the first one. Uh, just being greedy, uh, not being comfortable and satisfied. Uh, Still a long series, um, and it's far from over. So I think we just got to be greedy and stay focused. Make sure you know we lock in all day today uh, and not be happy. And just go out there and do what we need to do tomorrow. Do you sense frustration from their big guys because after the game, one of them didn't want to talk to the media? It seems like they have been frustrated by your good play inside. Uh, I don't know. I don't really get caught up in what they got going on, but. You know, at the end of the day, we're just going out there and do what we need to do. And I know as the four bigs that we got planned, we work together and try to make it tough on them. Who did you see about Kevin defending DeAndre Jordan? You guys stayed small and crunched out. And Kevin was a much bigger DeAndre Jordan. It worked. I think uh, the small lineup was big for us yesterday. It gave him a different look. Uh, CB and Reggie came in and hit some shots. Um, I told Reggie yesterday that whatever he doing on the road, he need to do at home. So, <laughs> he gonna play like this. Scott keeps using the word balance when he talks about Kevin's and Russell's game. Do you feel 
that those guys have found a balance in terms of getting their own and getting their teammates involved as well as they ever have? Yeah, I think so. But I think with the way Russ played in the first half for us passing the ball, getting his teammates involved, I think that opened it up for him like in the third and fourth quarter. And, you know, I think all our bigs doing a great job of setting screens for KD and getting them open. But I said it last night for us with KD playing against Tony Allen last, last series. I think that helped them a lot for this series. Chris, when you watch the tape, what kind of um, Same thing I said last night, our defense. You know, our defense, uh, we didn't we didn't get stops. We didn't defend as well as we needed to. And um, that was the story of the game. Chris, when you guys give up easy baskets, those backdoor laps, those uncontested finishes at the rim, does that have a deflating effect? Is that uh, it no? is, but we got to get past it. But uh, at the same time, you know, when you got when you have two guys as dynamic as, as Russ and KD, you got to try to limit as many easy baskets as possible. You know, you know they're going to get to the free throw line. Uh, they're going to make t tough shots, so you got to try to limit the easy ones. Chris, how do you guys balance the idea of playing with a sense of urgency and not being desperate? Uh, you just do. You just do. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. I think we just got to play and not, you know, necessarily worry about, you know, being desperate. But we definitely got to play with a sense of urgency because uh, even when we was up 1-0, now down 2-1, you know, we understand that, you know, it's not over. It's not time to hang our heads, anything like that. We just need to get game four. You were down 1-0 in the last series. Can you take anything from that coming back in that one, or is it a little bit different because it's deeper into the series? And that last series so long gone, I don't think about I just think about <clears throat> what we need to do to try to win game four. Every game is its own game. Can you think about what you need to do to win game four with the physical nature of this series now? Where does composure, because that likely could surface again tomorrow with the physical game? Um, you just got to keep your composure. I mean, it is what it is, but it's an emotional game, too. I don't think fans would watch it as much as we all, if we play with no emotions. You know what I mean? You got to learn how to control those emotions and then early in the game, try to figure out how it's going to be officiated. What have they done against JJ? Um, it's... Like KD's playing some time, but chasing Yeah, but KD gets off his body and stuff like that, and we just got to find... Uh, ways to get him shots. 11 points a game in this series. Do you feel like you've maybe gotten away from some things defensively that worked for you earlier in this year? Yeah, I think uh, I mean, with the exception of the first game, I think the last two games we've been we haven't been very good. You know, I thought they kind of got everything they wanted. Um, the last two games, you know, they got to the rim, they got easy buckets, they got threes, they got everything. So uh, we got to be better. How do, how do you counteract that? Um, I mean, honestly, it's it's not really one particular area. Um, like I said, I mean, they they got a lot of things. I mean, they got so many dunks, so, so many easy dunks. You know, early first quarter um, and almost throughout the game last night. The um, you know transition, we got to be better. Pick and roll, we got to be better. And then just half court defense, just rotating and all that, we got to be better. Could you be more physical in terms of? Denying some of the, those easy shots or moving them off spots. Um, it's tough with with Durant and, and, and Westbrook. They go to the line a lot, um, so being physical with them, you know, just kind of puts you in the bonus a little bit earlier. Um, can't really can't really get up into them. But everybody else, I think we need to do a better job of, of limiting their easy looks um, by being being up into them. Like if in fact every game they would assist the urgency. You get to another game, game four, down 2 1. How high does the urgent level raise? I mean, is it getting even higher or can it get such a um, It'd be nice if it couldn't because that means you're playing every single game at the, at the most, at the highest level of urgency. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's certain games where, I mean, in game seven, obviously, the, the sense of urgency has to be at an all time high. And, um, but for us, you know, like we, we talked about last night, it's, it's, it's kind of a must-win game for us. Um, just because, you know, got to even the series. I mean, right now, 2-1, every series is going to go 2-1. You know, it, it, it's tied uh, after the first two, obviously. So, um, we, I mean, we put ourselves in a hole, but, you know, we just got to, we just got to come out and, and correct some mistakes. Like the one thing Doc talks about is how important that regroup 
passion is. Do you guys, it seems like it would be simple to know that, but do you, do you, do you think you guys like that? Um, no, I mean, I think we, we for sure know it. Um, I think there's a there's a fine line in between, you know, really being worried about every possession and still playing freely and, and not, you know, overthinking. Um, so I think when you overthink sometimes and you, you're scared to make a mistake, that's when you do make a mistake. So um, I think we just need to make the simple play and, and um, you know, not try to do too much and, and trust our offense, really. You guys still learning that? You think in, in Kind of as, as you grow as a team, is it still something that you guys still need to kind of grasp? Um, yeah, I mean, we don't do it. Uh, if we did it 100% of the time, you know, I would say we, we don't need to, to, to get better. We don't, you know, we're not learning anymore. But, yeah, I mean, we, we have lapses, especially here and there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's something that we're still working on. Well, you, on, on plays were like yesterday where you got hit in the nose, how difficult is it to keep your composure, to keep your team's composure with the stakes so high? Um, I mean, I didn't think that that play was, you know, like intentional or dirty by any means. But it's it's, it's a little bit baffling how um, something like that happens. And I mean, I get hit in the nose a lot and don't bleed like that. Um, so it's going to take some force. So it's interesting to me how you know something like that happens and it's just nothing. How physically attacking? You kind of had a bulldog mentality in, in the post there. Like it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but it was like almost a by any means necessary way to score. Uh, yeah, I mean, you do that in the game. Uh, it's physical. It, it is very physical, but um, you know, as long as the game is being called called like that, you know, that's just kind of how you have to play. And, and um, the good thing about it, if it's physically taxing for me, it's got to be physically taxing for everybody else. Um, so. You know, it's, it's not like we're expending a whole lot of energy and they're not. Uh, both teams are. So uh, if the games are, are being called like that, then you know, that's kind of how it has to be. That's Clippers forward Blake Griffin in the lineup tomorrow for the 2.30 Oklahoma time tip-off. We get things started here on the franchise on the TotallyTickets.com countdown to tip-off at 1.30. Join John Rohde and Desmond Mason along with yours truly live from Staples Center as we get things rolling before the Thunder play the Clippers in Game 4. From the Santa Monica Pier, I'm David Garrett for 1077 The Franchise.